मैरिज एंड मेडिटेशन पार्ट थ्री सेवन बॉडीज इन द सेकेंड बॉडी लव एंड हेट्रिड इज द बेसिस ऑफ पोलैरिटी एंड दिस मैनिफेस्ट इन सो मेनी वेज द बेसिक पोलैरिटीज रिमेन्स एज लाइक एंड डिस लाइक एवरी मोमेंट लाइक बिकम्स डिसलाइक एंड डिसलाइक बिकम्स लाइक बट यू नेवर सी दिस वेन योर लाइकिंग बिकम्स डिसलाइकिंग एंड वेन यू सप्रेस योर डिसलाइकिंग यू कंटिन्यू टू फूल योर सेल्फ बाई सेंग दैट द लाइकिंग विल कंटिन्यू ऑलवेज ऑल्सो इफ यू डिसलाइक समथिंग एंड कंटिन्यू टू सो कंटिन्यू टू डू सो you are missing out on the moment when liking had entered you as we are we continue to suppress our love for our enemies and suppress our hatred for our friends by nature we go on suppressing we only allow one movement and when it comes back to us we are at ease but we can never continue in the second body vital force manifests itself as like and dislike love and hate however this happens as breath influence remains the only medium while air is the medium in the physical body it is not the question of like alone when you come in contact with someone this does not mean that you are in the room and as soon as someone enters you start liking or disliking even if you are alone both liking and disliking go on happening alternately this body exists because of polarity as soon as you are a witness to it then you can laugh at the whole process and there is no enemy or no friend then you know this is a natural phenomena and this is what happens as the meditation deepens and you become more and more conscious when you are a witness to your likes and dislikes in the second body only then you can transcend to the third body otherwise most of us remain stuck at the first body life known your third body is astral it has magnetic force this magnetic force is the breath in the astral body one moment you are powerful and the very next moment you feel powerless one moment you are hopeful and the very next moment you are hopeless also one moment you are confident and the next moment you are uncertain this is the incoming and the outgoing magnetic force in the astral body as at such moments you can even defy god also there are moments when you are even afraid of your own shadow so when the magnetic force is in you or is coming in you it feels great and when it is not you are no one this goes on changing it is like day and night the cycle goes on thus even a person like napoleon had his important moments even a coward has his moments of bravery some time ago i had spoken on biorhythm charts the modern psychology only speaks of the physical mental and intellectual cycles but each body has its own cycle which is related to incoming and outgoing breath in the chinese technique of judo karate and the like one learns to know when the person the other person is powerless that is the moment when you attack the opponent and if he is powerful you are bound to be defeated the participants learn the moment when the magnetic force is going out thus the person 
incites the opponent to attack him when the magnetic force is coming in. Thus, incoming and outgoing magnetic force corresponds to your breathing. Because of this, whenever you have to do something difficult or you have to lift the weight or something, you simply take a deep breath and then hold your breath in. This is the way. You cannot lift a heavy stone when your breath is going out. But when the breath is coming in or held in, then you can do it. Thus your breath corresponds to all that is going on in the third body. So when the breath is going out, unless the person is trained to fool you, that is the moment to attack. This is the secret of Judo and Karate. This way you can defeat even a person is stronger than you when the magnetic force has gone out of him. When Leon Lee Fort, who was the biographer of, who went to meet the masters of Gurchia, one of the sheikh told him, I taught him how to breathe. This baffled Leon and he murmured, breathing, then the sheikh said, do you know how to breathe? He is referring to these seven bodies and the incoming and the outgoing breath. The astral body dwells within a magnetic field. This magnetic field acts like the air surrounding the physical body. There is always magnetic force around you. You continue to breathe in and breathe out. You need to be aware of this incoming and outgoing magnetic force. And when you are aware of this, you can either be powerful or powerless. You have transcended both. And when you have transcended both the incoming and the outgoing force, you are a witness to this magnetic force that comes in and goes out. You can enter the fourth body. This is your mental body. Thoughts come in and go out. This has a parallel as well. As you breathe in, thoughts come in. And this is the moment when original thinking is born in you. And the moment of breathing out are the moments when no original thought is born in you. When original thoughts are taking birth within you, breathing will come to a cessation. This is the only corresponding phenomenon. When the thoughts are going out, nothing happens. It is almost like a dead state. So when you are aware of the incoming and the outgoing thought, you transcend this fourth body and thus knock the doors of the fifth body. Only when you transcend beyond a particular body you enter in the next. It is like education system. When you pass the standard one or in the spiritual terminology transcend the standard one then you can enter into the second stage. This is why we emphasize on breathing and related to the zikr. But what happens? The focus remains on the zikr, not on the breathing. And we do the zikr mechanically, then it cannot help. Up to the fourth body, everything is quite clear and there is no difficulty to understand because you somehow have the experience of each of these seven bodies, the incoming and the outgoing breath, the incoming and outgoing magnetic influence, the incoming and outgoing thoughts. However, beyond the fourth body, the things become strange. Yet still something can be understood. So when you transcend the fourth body, you will understand it more. Your fifth body is the spiritual body. It is life that creates the atmosphere for it. For the fifth body, life acts like breath. Love and hatred 
magnetic force and the thought in the lower body. Therefore, fifth body, in the fifth body, the incoming is the moment of life and the outgoing is visualized at the moment of death. In this stage, the seeker learns the moments of life and death while being in the body. He is in the body, but he has experienced that which is beyond death. He begins to experience. With this body, you come to realize that life is not something within you. It comes into you and goes out as well. Thus, life exists outside you as well. It only comes in and goes out in certain moments. The moment is exactly like breath. It is because of this fifth body that both breath and pran are considered as synonyms. The word pran is significant for the fifth body. Pran, the life force, the Alan Whitey, or Gone, as William Reich calls it. It refers to life that is coming in and then going out. This is the reason that there is a constant fear of death and when you transcend the fifth body, the fear of death disappears and you realize that there is nothing like death. As human beings, we are always aware that death is nearby, just waiting around the corner. This feeling of death, the feeling of insecurity awaits you. In the fifth body, the feeling is very vague and utter darkness pervades. It is because you are not aware of it as yet. In the process of transformation, when you reach the fifth body and become aware of its presence and happening, then you can come to experience that birth, life and death are just the breath in this fifth body. You experience that birth, life and death are just breath in this body. When you are aware of this, then you know that you cannot die. You experience that which is never born, never dies. That which is synonymous with God, which is Noor, which is light, which is Atman, which is soul, which is root. And that is why you are eternal. And when Shankar says, Chidananda Rupa, Shivoham, Shivoham, I am ever blissful. My form is Chid Anand. That eternal bliss that is always there. Chid Anand. Ever existing. And the form of that is Shivoham the eternal. That which is never born, never dies. You are not born. Both life and death are not the inherent phenomena. These are an outward phenomena happening to you. You are you have never been alive or dead. You have never been alive or dead. You are the one who transcends both. However, this feeling of transcendence can come to you only when you are aware of the force of life and death in the fifth body, the spiritual body. Sigmund Freud mentioned somewhere that somehow he got the glimpse of this. Freud was not interested in yoga. Otherwise, he would have understood the phenomena clearly. This he called the will to die. He also said that everyone longs for life, but at some time or the other, he also longs for death. Man has will to live and will to die. However, the Western mind considered this as absurd. The argument is based on the fact how these contradictory wills could ever exist in man. Simultaneously, Freud argued that there is always the possibility of suicide and it is because of this that there comes the will to die. Such is the phenomena that always happens. But such is not the case with animals. No animal is aware of the fifth body. So animals cannot commit suicide. For suicide, one thing is essential, the awareness of life, that there is life.
and animals are not aware of life. Another thing that is essential for suicide is the unawareness of death. First you are aware of life and you are unaware of death. Animals cannot commit suicide because they are neither aware of death nor unaware of death. Man can commit suicide. He is aware of life but he has not experienced death. He is unaware of it. When you are aware of death then you cannot commit suicide. For a Buddha suicide is utter nonsense. He knows that you cannot kill yourself. You can only pretend. Death belongs to the fifth point. Death comes from a particular energy and that is and also is the outcome of a particular energy. This coming and going happens in you. So when you are identified with the first, you can commit the second. When you are identified with life, and if life is becoming almost impossible, then you can decide to commit suicide. Thus asserting is another aspect of the fifth body. You will hardly find an individual who had not thought of committing suicide at some time or the other. Death is the other side of life, the other side of the coin, the other show. When you are too much obsessed with life, and deny death, you can kill another. By doing so, you fulfill your death wish and you know that the other can die, but you cannot. People like Hitler, Mussolini, etc., they were very much afraid of death. So they projected this on others. Killing others gives a feeling that he is more powerful than death. Thus he thinks he can transcend death and what he can do to others cannot be done to him. This is a projection, but it always comes back to you. So when you kill so many people, then in the end you are sure to commit suicide. And this is how the projection comes back to you. In the fifth body, with both life and death coming to you, one cannot get attached to either of the two. When you are attached, you are not accepting the polarity in its totality. You are bound to get sick. Up to the fourth body, everything is easy. However, it is most difficult to conceive death and then accept it as another aspect of life to accept both life and death as two sides of the same coin is very difficult, but it is the essence of the fifth body. This is pranic existence in the fifth body. However, from here, the things become difficult. After the fifth body, ego drops. No more ego. You are one with all. The sixth body is called the cosmic body. Fana has happened. Everything is cosmic now. So the polarity takes the form of creation and destruction. Shrishti and Pralai as the Hindus use these words. Creation and destruction. This is the phenomena that from the sixth body onwards, everything is very difficult. According to Hindus, these forces are called Brahma, the creator, and Shiva, the destroyer. Brahma is concerned with creation, Vishnu with the preservation, and Shiva with the destruction or dissolution. This body has a vast sphere of creation and dissolution. The forces of Brahma, the creator, and the destructor, Shiva, remains there. Every moment creation comes to you and then every moment everything goes back into dissolution. So when a master says that he has seen the creation and dissolution, he is speaking of the sixth body, ego is no more. Everything is coming in and going out. This is known as the cosmic form of Krishna. You are one with it. 
and this continues when in Bhagavad Gita Arjun wanted to see the cosmic form of Krishna. He showed it that everything is coming into him at the dissolution, dissolving into it. All the waters of the rivers is dissolving into the ocean and then a new being is being created, the oceanic being, the cosmic being. This is a vast topic.